Now back to Richard Cluche reports. Jeff, thanks so very much. Michael Legary is here. Scott Young is here. Gentlemen, do your lists at all overlap at all? You, you don't have similar... We don't have the specific same things. We've got some concepts that are kind of the same. Okay. Some are, some are kind of obvious, but the way we went in different directions, I think, is pretty cool. Yeah, it was really All right. Cool. All right. The top five most important inventions of all time. Just ahead, you can weigh in on this live conversation and online. And we'll also talk about all those backyard or basement or garage inventors and how you can get your product to prototype and to market that's just ahead in depth and up close this is richard cluche reports on cjob 68 eight today eight tomorrow with the top list next week speaking of lists the top inventions of all time, the most important inventions. And I guess Scott Young of the Manitoba Planetarium, slightly different. We said the top inventions, we're looking for a popularity contest. No, we're looking for the most important inventions of all time. Tough to come up with? Absolutely. I mean, because most inventions aren't original ideas that go from zero to it amazing right away. It's somebody invents something and somebody takes that and does another invention on top of it and you put all these pieces together. So it's really hard to sort of fi figure out the underlying concept and, and, and use that. Like most of the things that I picked are really a series of inventions that have progressed throughout time. All right, your list in a moment, and we'll count them down five, four, three, two, one, and we'll incorporate your lists and your calls coming up at seven eight zero sixty eight sixty eight. Michael Legary, tell us a little bit about your background. Were you always fascinated with inventions? Yeah, really from day one. You know, grew up in an entrepreneurial family, uh, started several entrepreneurial businesses, and just love being around inventions and new ideas all the time. So that's, that's really been my lifeblood. So talk a little bit about how you got your interest into a career. Uh, for me, really, it was it came from a, a passion perspective. You know, there's there's hundreds of thousands of different things you can do with your life. And for me, I found one that I was really passionate about. And it's, it's odd how, for me, it's been about innovation and uh, specifically things like security. That's uh, my, uh, my company here in, in Manitoba does information security for international organizations. And, uh, you know, that, that problem is so hard to solve and it's evolving all the time. And that's what happens at a Scentworks, our not-for-profit makerspace, where literally every day Winnipeggers are coming in with the impossible idea we have to figure out how to solve with them uh, as a community. A little bit later on, we'll tell you about this fascinating thing that you folks do and how people are really tapping into it uh, for research and to test their ideas and ultimately uh, prototype and get these things to market. Uh, tough to come up with this list or a little easier than, than, than most? Yeah, I think... Um you know, I, I tried to put it, you know, in, in, in perspective of all time. So, you know, there's a couple, a couple things that are important and we've seen become very important in the last couple of years. Uh, so I put those on the list and then, you know, tried to step back and say, well, really, when we look at where we are today, what were some of the fundamentals? So it started off easy, but like Scott mentioned, it's the evolution and the continued re reinvention of these concepts is, is very tough to pinpoint without uh, serious study. All right, so where do you folks start off with that number five? Is that kind of your your building blocks to everything else, Scott? Or um, No, you know, it's, it's sort of scattered throughout. It, it's, it's, I didn't even formally rate all of them. I couldn't get to the point where I could say this was more important than that because the impact of most of these things is just so broad. It's, it's, it's how, do you, how do you compare? So I, I actually have a 11 items on my list. However, we, you know, top five we can do. Uh, it's easy to say if it's in the top five or not, but to say which is number one, uh, that's pretty tough. Okay, so let's begin. Which one would make your list then? Um, I started um, with agriculture. Agriculture, um, farming. Farming. Um, one of the things that was a defining thing in the human history was we stopped having to follow the herds wherever they went and we can stay in one place. Well, then it was worthwhile building permanent houses instead of tents. Then it was worthwhile decorating those houses. Art in, was invented because farming had saved us enough time that we could do that. The same with music, the same with science. All of those things came out of the free time that we suddenly had because agriculture made food production easier. So instead of going after the bison or the animal, 
build a fence and yeah, keep it there. Exactly. So actually, one of the inventions, the key inventions, I guess, would be the fence uh, in, in, that, in some way. <laughs> but just being able to domesticate animals, yeah. Um, because basically, if you look at every other species on Earth, they spend all their time gathering food. Some of them, like dolphins, for example, might be reasonably intelligent, chimpanzees, things like that, but they don't do the things we do because they're always getting bugs out of the tree or whatever. Oh, we, we've gotten past that. I, I love your approach to this list. Michael, how about you? Yeah. How did you approach this? See, all that was quite, uh, uh, quite in relation. For me, I, I used the, a lot of the, the, the geek language here, but you know, currently we, call, we have the concept of open source licensing, you know, okay. people developing an idea and sharing it for free with a community. And agriculture is the perfect example of that, where you know people got together, learned these skills, shared it with their their fellow peers in the community, taught it to their children, and evolved it over time. And I think right now for us, that explicit concept of licensing has become very important because nowadays not everyone's free willing to share for free, and keeping that concept live and well is critical to us evolving beyond where we are today. So uh, that's really how operating systems evolved, correct? Operating systems, software, you know, even back to agriculture, one of the neatest projects that's uh, going online in some of the different maker spaces out there is people are building open source farm equipment mm -hmm. so third world countries can afford a tractor for a couple thousand dollars mm -hmm. or hundred dollars versus buying, you know, one of the name brands here for several million. And it's that idea of sharing that knowledge and for free that's going to keep us alive. All right. What else is on your lists? That's coming up and your lists as well here at the Superstation. My lines are now open at 780-6868, pound 680, toll free and MTS mobility, 1-800-665-2202. You can get online and reach us at Twitter, Richard CJOB. That's our Twitter handle, Richard CJOB. Email at cjob.com. Follow the links to Richard Cluche reports. Facebook as well. Scott Young from the Manitoba Planetarium. Michael Laguerre is here. And we're talking about the most important inventions of all time. Some of your lists, uh, Ted says, computers, radio, flight, the combustion engine, the printing press. Jerry says, greatest invention in history, the Gutenberg uh, press of the 1400s, movable press type as well. Mike writes, the written and spoken language, mathematics, physics, fire, the wheel, and swimming. All right, what's next on your list, Michael? All right. Number four, you know, the, the printing press is pretty much a bang-on uh, issue there. Like, for me, I, I, went ga I went totally geek, really, for us right now. It's, it's semiconductor memory. It's not just things like paper and you know, what the press was producing, but really the fact that we took that and can now access it instantaneously, not just by human being, but any entity that you know can interpret it can uh, can share information and create new information wildly. I think who, that's like who invented issue. that? Who invented memory? Uh, th there's there's six different inventors that actually did it over time. So there's different forms of uh, of uh, semiconductor memory, non-volatile memory. So there is a, a, a whole cluster of folks uh, dedicated to it. This is Tony on CJOB 68 with our panel. Hey, Tony. Hey, what um, makes your I a, list? I have a very simple invention: the light bulb. The light bulb, yeah, that yeah, changed absolutely. that changed everything, didn't it, Tony? Yep. All right. Well, Thanks so very much. Um, yeah, before that, it was all about having to do things when the sun was up. Exactly. But before that, you have to talk about the invention of electricity, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, because the invention of electricity. Yeah allowed us to do so many other things. So does that make either that's of your actually, list? That's on my list. Um, I sort of took the spin of um, a power generation, really, because it's, it's not just electricity. That's the sort of most common one. But electricity was an, was an early form, um, and then hydroelectricity, power generation, and things like that. Um, you know, Edison did all of his pioneering work with light bulbs and electricity in the late 1800s. Um, it was actually the British that had the first hydro plant generating electricity. And, uh, I mean, right now it is one of the cleanest sort of mainstream uh, renewable resources that there are. Um, and for us in Manitoba, it's a huge part of the economy, obviously. Um, so electricity is sort of one of those all-encompassing things without which most of the 20th century would not have progressed as it did. I mean, it's, it's literally a game changer. I would agree. I would agree. It's Absolutely. tough. It's really tough to come up with the, 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 a tight, tight list on something like this because, yeah. um, because yes, I agree with, with Tony on the light bulb, but before that, 
was the invention of electricity and the the means to invent it through um, through the wheels through 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 that whole process. Yeah. Well, the interesting thing too is it's about you know we look at that organic process of where we start and where we're going. It's also those inventions that create the forks, right? Like mm -hmm. where you know with power. All uh, right, even to say nuclear power, mm -hmm. we could have gone one way or the other, very positive or very negative. Yeah. yeah so, you know, again, influential, uh, but you, know, you look at it, it's just one fork in the road that we see many forks on. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I, I actually have nuclear energy on my list as well. And in fact, um, when I thought about top, ten, like the top inventions, you know, influencing history for good or for bad, you know, there's a few on here that are sort of obviously great inventions. There are some that are patently bad in most ways, but they've totally influenced the, uh, the the world that we live in today. What makes my list coming up, Michael, before we go to break, what else is on your list here? Uh, the next one uh, we call today social networking, right? And I find uh, all of the uptake we see th like around things like, say, Facebook, to a lesser extent, Google+, all of that comes from a very organic need that we have as humans. That concept of social networking has been gone going on since day one. And I think uh, that that formalization of that concept through community, you know, into the tools we see on the internet today, I think are a tremendous invention and evolution that's going to drive us even further into the future. The most important inventions of all time on CJOB. This is Jacob on CJOB 68 with Michael Scott and Richard. Jacob, invention. What is it for you? For me, yeah. um, I would say that it's got to be antibacterial soap. Why? Uh, well, I mean, if you look at before we had anything that was antibacterial, uh, a minor procedure could turn into someone getting a massive infection and dying, and there was no way to cure that. That's so true. Uh, and when we look at, at medicine and technology, um, the scalpel has to be on that list, too. Oh, of course. To me, like... It just makes me sad uh, about, about our society when, uh, I mean, I don't want to offend anybody, but when you've got social media as one of our most top inventions, social media really over top of all these things that have saved millions of people's lives and have changed the medical world forever, you've got social media on the list as a top. Well, uh, and, and, and take Michael to task on this. He can defend this as well. I, I'm, I, we don't have to pussyfoot around this. That's what lists we, are If for. you posted that on uh, on Facebook, I'd, I'd like it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so, eh? <laughs> Yeah, that's why it's got to be a bigger list. I mean, getting down to top five, are you, are you looking at all time? Are we, you know, it's, it's a tough thing to do. Most important inventions of all time. Jacob, thank you so very much. 780-6868, pound 680, toll free and MTS mobility, 1-800-665-2202. Uh, Stephen, uh, hopefully with tongue in cheek, says the remote control, the best invention of all time. And we have to clarify and distinguish between discoveries and inventions. Electricity is a discovery, not yeah, an invention. Yeah, um, uh, that's why I sort of listed it as electrical power generation. I mean, lightning's been around long before we have, and we, we discovered it and described it. But to be able to make it at will, same thing with fire, same thing with, with gravity. I mean, Newton described gravity, but he didn't invent it. This is George on CJOB 68 with Michael and Scott. Go ahead, George. Oh, how are you? I think it's a steam engine. Yep. Years ago, when they first made it, didn't just pull trains down the track. They they used to generate pump water with them. They used to generate hydro, and I mean, they built the railway bed across Canada. They built our bridges. I think it's a steam engine. No, steam absolutely. propulsion. Thank you so very much, George. Again, hard to disagree yeah. with this. Yeah. It was on my list, and I, I but I just said the engine because I went from steam engine to internal combustion engine and and sort of the whole gamut. But going back to number five, you, you yeah. look at you think of agriculture in Manitoba. Yeah, you don't see an early picture without steam involved. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, where does the gun and gunpowder? make it on this gunpowder's on my number three actually <laughs> okay talk about that and the significance well, of that of course it kills animals it kills people and allows uh allows war to progress if you yeah know. it's probably one of the ones that has had more negative consequences than anything else that sort of made my list um i mean gunpowder was known since like 700 a.d the the chinese were using it to make rockets and things like that um first used as a weapon of war in the 13th century, spread through the Middle East into Europe. By the 14th century, everybody had guns. 
and they were the weapon of choice, obviously. Um, and then when you get into the big cannons and artilleries of the, the late 1800s and then into World War I, I mean, all that gunpowder was a huge impact. See, I think there's negative aspects, but I think also what's neat about the gun is that it's allowed us to protect what we feel is important. Now, you think of what the free world is. Oh, for sure. Right? It's, yeah. it's allowed folks to communicate and, and to right or wrong to, to uh, commit to their ideas uh, upon a community, right? They, they can enforce their ideals and, uh, and give us you know, the, the world we see today. Well, yeah, that, that's why I put it on, because it's had such a huge influence, whether you agree or disagree <laughs> with which parts are good. I mean, it's, yeah. it's undeniable that it's up there. Yeah. This is Mike on CJOB 68, our panel on the most important inventions of all time. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, you know, I like pasteurization. Uh, it's made some incredible changes to society. Uh, yeah, and that goes to the inventions that have made life a lot safer for us to enjoy yeah. the agriculture products that yeah. we talk about. Well, and it's, it's, it's part of my number two, actually, so we can get to it. Well, let's get okay. to it. Um, <laughs> basically, and, and the, uh, the caller before that was talking about antibiotics and antibacterial soap and things like that, that whole stream, I mean, uh, Pasteur, who invented pasteurization, was one of the first people to, to notice that bacteria could selectively damage other kinds of things and, and not the host cells kinds of thing. And then um, that was back in 1877. And ever since then, it's been a, con uh, a continuous evolution, part discovery, but then part invention into how to apply those discoveries. So there's a lot of human invention as well based on the discoveries. No, absolutely. Uh, my, my top two is quite different. Let's go number two, and we'll sure. save number one. What's your number so two? My number two is, is the concept of governance. So be it uh, from government, you know, all the different shapes, be it dictatorships, fiefdoms, our free world government, new communism, all those concepts are influential on a daily basis. You know, and and the, the concept simply solely of leadership, but you know, governing of, of communities, of countries, of, of multiple nations, uh, that's allowed us to have the, the unity minimum unity required to get these inventions implemented and, and impacting all our lives. What's mm -hmm. number one on their lists? What's number one on your list? We'll continue the conversation. Also, gentlemen, think about who is the most influential inventor of all time. And we'll tell you if you're a basement or a garage inventor, how you can connect with Michael's group that can help you get a product to prototype and to market. Agree or disagree? Email Richard at cjob.com. My lines are open. More of your most important inventions of all time as we continue. Scott Young of the Planetarium. Michael Laguerre is chairman of Setworks, Securitas. Michael, tell us about what your group does in helping the backyard, basement, garage inventor to get their products uh, ultimately to prototype and maybe to market. For sure, yeah. Ascentworks is a not-for-profit makerspace. Uh, it's a facility where businesses, entrepreneurs, artists, students can come and get access to the specialized equipment or skill sets that they need to get their idea formed, developed, and out to market. And, and really give them a capacity they otherwise might not be able to afford or receive here in Winnipeg. So it's, it's really about giving the community a capacity to, to really thrive here in Manitoba. So you've got access to funding to help build prototypes at we, times? Really, we are, we are a facility. So for a, uh, basically a, a modest fee, like we charge uh, uh, 50 to to $100 a month for 24 by 7 access to essentially half a million dollars in equipment, from 3D printers to woodworking tools and everything in between. And not only access, but we show how people how to use them. So it's really about teaching a person to fish, so they can they can create new ideas here. Are you at a point where you can say this idea was invented as a result of what we're doing here? Yeah, I'd say we have. Um, there's actually a, a couple folks that uh, are just in the process of patenting their idea that uh, should hopefully. Uh, uh, be quite without uh, being specific what area are we looking at it's here? Um, in textiles uh, another one actually we had which is a bit more soft we, we can mention was we had a, a two really amazing gentlemen here locally 
start a brand new snowboard company. Literally from from nothing, created a brand new snowboard uh, company right here in Manitoba in the last three months. So how do we connect with you folks? Uh, the best way is online at ascentworks.com. So it's uh, ascentworks.com or ascentworks.ca. And every Tuesday we have uh, at 7 p.m. we have a community night where people can come down and check out the facility firsthand. Okay, more of that information just ahead. Mechanical refrigeration. Hey, it keeps vaccines, foods, all perishables to law allow for a longer shelf right life. Uh, email at cjob.com. Live conversation right now as we drive towards number one from both our guests, Michael and Scott. This is Tracy on CJOB 68. Tracy, thank you for joining us. Go ahead, please. Hi, thanks for having me on. I have an extremely interesting invention that came from an inventor here in Winnipeg, Manitoba, that has gotten world-renowned, I don't know what to call it, but the Queen has recognized him for it. He, I own a house cleaning business, skirts and home cleaning, three old washing machines in his basement, and it astonishes me. The dialysis machine, yeah, has saved, uh, dare I say, thousands, hundreds of thousands of lives. lives. Winnipeg changing the face of the earth. Yeah. This is Jeff on CJOB 68. Go ahead, Jeff. Hi. Uh, well, this is a fairly big blanket, I guess, but uh, we got toilets, hot and cold running water, all the sanitary stuff. I mean, plumbing's been around for forever, I guess. But Indoor plumbing, yeah. yeah. That would change the world because of, uh, for sanitary reasons as well. How does it all work, Scott? It's magic. No, the, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a huge infrastructure that we never see, but basically it, pre it has prevented the human race from being wiped out by disease ever since its invention, basically. It's, uh, think of just the garbage and the, the stuff that one house generates, right? Yeah. Well, Rome really grew because of its ability to sanitize itself and fell because it lost that capacity. That's right. right. It's, yeah. it's fundamental. Number one on their list. Next. This is Jerry on CJOB 68. What's on your list, Jerry? Um, I think the airplane was a great invention. Well, yeah, it's the great, great equalizer. It's the one that has uh, allowed us to, to see other parts of the world. Don writes at cjob.com, uh, tongue firmly in his cheek, the woman's thong. Michael Legary, Scott Young. Michael, what's at the top of your list? All right. So it's uh, I got the big, the big view of it and the small view, and the, the big view is commerce and financial systems and you know today of all days with with Greece uh, potentially going to default I think it's uh, uh, something that influences all our lives but the microcosm level it's really the concept of the loan you know back from even in the invention of the wheel without that the, the person's spouse giving them the time to work on the wheel or the person who cut the marble the rock the whatever to, to allow them to build the wheel without that concept of a loan uh, invention just wouldn't happen Scott Young I've got a whole bunch of other things on the list, telecommunications telecommunications, and uh, antibiotics and stuff like that. But I went with, I realize this is all time, so I went with nuclear power. Because it's kind of current to a point, but also really future. If we get to the point where we can use fusion in a, sa in a safe and easy to use way, the energy problems for the world are over. Absolutely. But that's a ways off. The top and most influential inventor. It's tough to say. I mean, a lot of people would say Edison because he patented a lot of things, but he actually ripped off a bunch of other people's <laughs> inventions, really. He was, he was actually a very good marketeer. Who invented guy. the computer chip? That, to me, would be the guy. Yeah, well, Bell Labs back in, yeah. like, 45 or something like that. Okay. Yeah, and many, uh, there's tons of different versions of it, too. Yeah. We will continue this argument, this debate, this list online. Michael and Scott, I thank you so very much for joining us on the Superstation.